of them. Yeah, the other problem I find out is that uh, this, this could be hugely accelerated if we could uh, do this like a post effect, like uh, because it's not a simulation, maybe this could have been done um, in a, on a uh, individual frames on the farm, if there was a farm, if you have a farm, if you have an access to a farm. And um, I think that would be really cool. Okay, so um, what we need is now. So basically, now we have these two groups because we're going to catch this geo, and then we will be able to um, separate the caches using base sim and ship sim. Well, what we can also do is that. Well, I'm not going. I'm going to keep everything now because I'm not sure if I was using those attributes later on. Um, let's save are seen as 06 solid sim and then we're gonna have solid sim pyro once we have a um, good cache <coughs> that looks decent enough so if you want you can divide these into bigger smaller objects it's gonna take a bit more longer to chop but then you'll get more nice jagged edges. Um, that would be cool. But for now, we are not interested. We just want to crash this thing down. Um, I really do want to see this guys moving before I move forward. So I'm just gonna press play and um, wait until it hits this to see that it is working before I start caching it out. So, yeah, that seems to be working. Things are breaking. I think we're in good shape to leave this for caching so we can continue for the following steps. So I'm going to actually do the manual. Go in to my first frame. And uh, We have some errors. Let me just double check this. Now I think it's because we scrubbed. I think it's fine. Let's just wait anyway to see. So, um, one thing to consider is that solid silver is really not very um, multi-thread friendly and um, this has its ups and downs, um, which means that if you have enough RAM, you can run for five of these simulations at the same time, and you will literally not extend simulation time, let's say, apart from the, uh, the input output overhead because um, you can do like test uh, this seems fine so I'm going to cache this out uh, let's put this on manual let's put the sub steps to at least two maybe four even I'm not sure actually I'm gonna go four it's gonna be a long cache slow but cool um and then i'm just gonna okay, save our scene clean some cache free some memory and then cache it out uh, we can also turn off cache simulation I'm not using any solvers and um which is the cache manager here Let's click this guy. It should free some memory. <coughs> Here is a detailed breakdown of what is using what. And sometimes when you click more, you manage to bring it down more. 
Um, I think I can show one other cool thing while we are at it that if you have um, to, to, to maximize the memory usage we should be able to I'm not sure if I have the hedge patch breaking anywhere um, I guess my memory was not set appropriately but H batch? No. It should be H batch. H. H batch, yeah, okay. So, what we can do is that this is another way. Sometimes I do my caches. Um, if you want to minimize the overhead, what you can do is that you can launch a command line with any. Which I'll show you now. Um, here, so we can say, I think, hbatch path to the file that should work. This should launch a Houdini. Okay, and then this is going to be. We will be staring in the scene so we're gonna go if you go to object level you're gonna see the same names like base crash simulation base crash simulation so we can go into base crash simulation list so um, I want to run solid sim cache so I can go in it's just like a file structure and then I can just go in here and then there is a render rope here so we're gonna say render dot render I think was Render dash dash help. No, dash help. Mm. Help. What was render? Okay, this, let me see. There should be a render node here. I think it was render dash v should give verbose. Was it? Give some information dash a. Alfred is percentage. And then render because. Basically, we are saying render means run render is this not. I think it was like this. Let's try rendering render. Okay, I think it was like this, which we can check the folder. Um, was going in where? Work without caches, tutorial caches, production oriented, solid sim cache, version one, just start spitting out files here if I am not mistaken. After the first frame. But this should be correct, yeah, and this should give it doesn't get any optimized than this. Basically, um, this is our task here. Let's just wait for it to, because the the uh, dash a and v three should give us some uh, feedback. I see some stuff happening. So what I'm gonna do now is just wait until we see some progress, <coughs> and then we can leave it alone. And then we can come back and do a play blast from the cached file. But I'm not seeing any progress. Um, okay, I'm going to pause the video and then come back to it as soon as I figure this out. Okay, well, um, we were right. It's. Um, Except that I'm not getting any progress here, but um, it is spitting out files, um, which we can check by reading back, obviously. Uh, so it did. So eleven forty-one to forty-three.
1141 reading back to 43 and this is all working so I'm gonna close this which I saved so I don't need to save again and uh, and I'm um, just gonna let it run and um, my memory will drop to quite low but my CPU usage is quite upsetting so right now we are using 12 percentage of my memory so that's uh, four or five gig which is pretty cool all right once it's done i'll get back to you okay so the um simulation is finished with i think we, we left it four sub steps i opened the scene again to uh, make a play blast and um let me remind myself yes it is in four sub steps so um here are my files so how long did it take we started the simulation at around midnight yesterday where's the rest of the program? not yesterday um okay let's say around midnight 11:56 and the simulation finished at 4 say 4 uh, 4 10 so that's just a little over 4 hours 4 hours 10 minutes let's say that's a long sim um, so actually it's 2 minutes per frame and if you haven't um, already uh, saw that there is another tool that you can uh, visualize BGO files without opening Houdini is that if you right click and there's a project viewer that you need to um, obviously assign with open mid it's under the bin folder in Windows and Linux and then if you this way you can just uh, let's say I want to check frame 1203 and then uh, open it with the Houdini project viewer which is just an object viewer to play basically um, on Linux, it seems like the, the OpenGL is not working at, um, through through this window. Maybe um, it's a bug. I don't know. Um, but I did already make a, a flipbook as well. Let's focus here. Okay, so I already uh, opened my scene and I dropped in an OpenGL lob. I just put a path. Uh, this is no different than making a um, flipbook, but uh, we can daisy uh, chain tasks like this. Say camera and camera through different frame ranges, different objects. It's just like a um, mantra. And then um, so we can have a look now this went into project files tutorial project uh, production oriented render flipbook shot five um, one thing I advise is a frame we were called DGV view you can go to their website this is a free um, player it's very handy very fast very small there's a Windows and Linux versions as well it's uh, it's a really neat one <coughs> and let's um, play our play blast and conclude our uh, solid solver uh, introduction to solid solver uh, 
Um, why is it not open? Let's play it through and play. Uh, it's on the render, flipbook, shot five, load, and press play. And then the spaceship crashes into the ground. Cool, it's, it's a big metal of hunk where we need. It's just, uh, it moves all together like a round ball. Well, I guess we can um, play with the settings, make this more stick spread, um, or leave as it is. It's gonna spread now. It's pretty cool. Okay, thank you for watching. Next uh, lesson, we will. Um, start creating the pyro simulation uh, part for this uh, cache.